welcome to today's webinar. My name is Marla Helly. I'll be your trainer. The objectives for today, we're going to actually describe what IP accountability requirements are and what are the regulatory considerations. And so we know we're in a regulated environment and any product that is investigational is not approved for sale. This is why we are going through our IND or an IDE, so investigational new drug or investigational device exemption. I will also include device information in here. You'll see similarities. We're going to also discuss the use of non-investigational medicinal products and how they're used for rescue medication management and the importance of documentation. So now we're looking at the use of concomitant medication. We're going to define the responsibilities of the research site in maintaining IP accountability. And we're going to develop strategies for how we identify and for solving IP accountability errors and deficiencies. So, with that, we'll go ahead and begin. I provided several handouts for the course. And in particular, I also included two documents when it comes to inspections that the FDA will refer to. Are you familiar with the BIMO that is used? I, by I've heard of it, but I'm not like very familiar. Okay. I bring this up because I feel like this is my mission that people understand <laughs> the FDA is coming from and specifically it focuses on what they're going to look for during an inspection. And so I've worked with many investigational sites as well as sponsors and CROs and I never want to argue nor do I want to pull out and say according to 21 CFR part da 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 da, da rather I want to educate to ensure that we are following the regulation because my job in whether I was a project manager, a CRA, or a coordinator is to ensure that the integrity of data was being maintained as well as subject safety. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't always understand what the regulations mean and so some of these guidance documents are helpful. So in particular, looking at the responsibility of the investigator. Also ICH GCP R2 addendum, looking at what they state about investigational product accountability. And then we have some process which we'll look at here. And also if there would be an inspection of the clinical investigator, what they look for. So I believe all of these documents that I've given you are worth your reading. I do not provide information which I think is a nice to have. It really enhances team learning and you could probably read this in an afternoon and it's very easy reading and it's self-explanatory. With that, let's jump into an introduction just looking at, you know, what is an investigational product. So I'm referencing now ICH. Investigational product is analogous to an investigational medicinal product. It's a pharmaceutical form of an active ingredient or a placebo that's being tested in a clinical trial. You'll notice here that ICH does not refer to devices. It is a document that was created for drug but we in the device world also refer to it because it has very good recommendations. And then a comparator can be an analogous to the non-investigational medicinal product. So it would be a non-investigational medicinal product or it can be a investigational or marketed product, whether it's active control or placebo. And I don't know if in your study, are you having any comparators such as placebo? No, there's no placebo and there's no comparators. It's just that one thing. Okay, wonderful. And then we can have rescue medication. And this can be medication <coughs> marketed. So you may see this in oncology study, for example, 
where medication is used to help with symptoms with the underlying disease. So that could help with, say, helping the white blood cell count come back up or helping with anemia. Those are medications to help. And often protocols will define what medications can and cannot be used from a rescue standpoint. And then we have blinding or masking of our product where we can have double blind or single blind where the patient does not know what they're receiving and if it's double blind, meaning that also the investigator doesn't know.